Hi, my name is Marisa Fon, I'm a classical guitar player and welcome to another tutorial. Today we are going to talk about how to develop right hand speed. I want to show you an exercise for the right hand that I was shown right in the beginning and I think that in a great manner it contributed to the right hand technique that I have today. If you want to be able to play fast and control the movements that you do, one of the most important things that you actually need to take care of is the relaxation. You can get to high speeds and play accurate just when your hands are relaxed enough so that you can control them. At the point that the hands really cramp up with tension, we start to play sloppy, we start to play out of control, and our limit of speed gets greatly reduced. The other side of the coin that we need to play fast is quick reaction of the fingers, quick motions. So we need to know how to make a really quick movement and yet relax the hand. And this exercise is gonna be great for that. The first thing that I want you to be aware of is that you have your hand relaxed at all times. You have your neutral position and your fingers are completely loose and completely relaxed. If you want, give it a try playing one single note for each finger so you can see if you're actually relaxing the finger or not. So this will be the most natural way to relax the finger. Just bouncing back initially to the startup position. Be careful, don't overdo the movement and end up adding too much movement into the playing. Something like this would not be good. Because you're moving far too much up and then you still have to use energy to pull back. What you want is a quick reaction and natural bounce back without me having to use any energy whatsoever to bring the finger back. The same thing applies for every finger. As you can see, the finger has to be bouncing back to the original state without any pressure. So the first step is that you are able to play this motion and relax really fast, really immediate. Now the exercise will take this very much into consideration in every step of the way. So keep it in mind. Now the first thing that we're going to do is play two notes really fast and we will play whatever given combination as fast as you can. Two notes as quick and as together as you can possibly play them. Make sure to always bounce back at the end of the combination. Am I? Now it would be wrong if I would be doing this. You see that I voluntarily have to bring the fingers back. This is just what you want to get rid of, this extra effort. Now with middle and ring finger. The opposite, index ring finger, the opposite, ring finger, index finger. Don't forget to play the two notes as much together as you can and the relaxation. Always these two sides of the coin in your mind while you play this exercise. This one is rather simple at first because it's just two fingers and we can, in a way, brush the notes out. So you should be able to achieve a rather high speed on that. If you don't think the action of the fingers as one thing and not the separate actions, these fingering combinations will apply for all the variations of the exercise that I will show you. The next step will be to add three notes instead of two. Make the notes as quick as you can. Notice that we are forced to bring back the first finger that plays, in this case the index finger, very fast back into action, so that will train the reaction of the finger to be faster and faster every time. Now the second variation is we do four notes. Remember to stop the video and maybe do all the other variations that I mentioned before. Always try to look for clarity and for one shot of energy for all the group of notes. And then relax the hand. Very, very, very important. Keep the hand relaxed and back into neutral position before you get to start the next set. For this reason, I'm not putting a metronome. I'm not thinking on notes or quarter notes or anything at all. I just want to hear the amount of notes of every set as quickly as I possibly can and then give yourself enough rest so that you can relax your hand, no matter how long it takes. Ideally, you want at least one or two or even three seconds in between each set. After you have done with the four notes, we will start with five. Make sure that you count here. So we have the one, two, three, four, five.
The next variation will be six. You can count one, two, three, one, two, three if it's easier for you. When the group starts to get big, it's helpful to think of a direction to the very last note. So giving an accent or thinking of some sort of a crescendo until the last note in order to help you pack those things, those notes together a lot better. Fun enough, this exercise is actually very good later on when you need to practice tuplets like, um, like quintuplets, sixtuplets and so on and all the variations um, because you really get to pronounce this strange amount of notes in one shot. Seven notes. Eight notes. Nine notes. Ten notes. You might notice that the more notes you add, the harder it is to let the hand go. And that is the problem that we have in the pieces, that the hand ends up tensing up and never getting a rest. So it's important that even with large numbers like 7, 9, 10, any of those combinations, you try to always give your hand a rest and learn into your muscle memory this moment of relaxation is very, very, very important. Now it's interesting to prolong these variations up until 10 notes in one shot because it's substantial enough so that you also get to train a little bit the endurance and the tiredness of the fingers reacting that fast for a little bit more prolonged amount of time but yet keeping it short enough so that it's not too heavy for your hands and you still train this quick reaction. Now some tips for you if you have never practiced such exercise before is start with placing your thumb somewhere on the bass strings so that you have support because when we have the contact point with the thumb it gets a little bit easier for the fingers to orientate. You can put it closer if that's uh, on the third string or in the second even um, or just on the basses, that's fine. But as long as you have a contact point it makes it a little bit easier. Then after that you can take it away and just have the thumb on the air and just play as I was doing now. This is a little bit harder because let's say you depend more on the arm control rather than the thumb being your contact point. Another thing will be for you to repeat those exercises not only on the first string. For sake of shortness and clarity I kept everything on the first string but ideally you want to do the same thing on the second, third and maybe until the basses so you really get to work on within the strings. Given that playing on the first string for this type of exercise is always a little bit easier because you have much more space here and you don't need to worry about hitting other strings. So playing on other strings it will definitely help you to narrow down the movement of your hand so that you learn not to touch other strings. If for some reason you play this exercise very much and you're still hitting other strings that means that the contact point from the guitar, the body of the guitar to your arm it's much too low or much too high. Most of the time you're too much behind like this and you're reaching for the strings um, too far away. So try to bring it a little bit closer so that when you close your fingers as in a fist your fingers actually are not in contact with any other string. Now time for the questions. Sandra Meisenburg asks As a guitar teacher I had to deal with giving lessons online. Not so easy but with Zoom it worked quite good. Could you please tell me which app you're using for your scores? You showed in the video, I am looking for an app where I can write fingerings and mark important sequences for example. Thank you. For my lessons I use the default uh, PDF reader from the iPad, but a very good uh, music notation software is the Fourscore because it has also the extras of adding pentagrams, of adding the signs of four, the piano, phrasing lines, um, articulations. For my own preference I prefer to give Fourscore for my own study and use the inbuilt uh, PDF reader just because it makes it faster and I don't need to export every time after the lesson the PDF with the annotations and do all this hassle. With the inbuilt PDF reader of the iPad you can just close the score and all the annotations remain there which is for me super super handy. 
I hope this helps and keep up with the good lessons. Second question. The second question comes from Heidi Sweet and she says, Thank you, Marcel, for another fine video. I have two big challenges that I would love some advice on. One is the bar record, especially in the first position. I have wondered if the action on my guitar needs to be adjusted as it never was. It is a 1971 Ramirez A1. That's a long time, girl. <laughs> and came to me directly from the shop in Spain with no prior testing it out, etc. I do not live anywhere near a professional luthier who might do this for me, so I will need to travel three hours probably. Well, my guitar maker is in Malaga, back in Spain, and I'm in the Netherlands, so if I ever have like a big problem, I ship it to him. If you make like a really good packaging, you can put your guitar in these travel cases like the Hitchcock ones, you know, these black ones, super sturdy ones. Then you can put it in a cardboard box with all full packed of this um, foam for the packaging. You should be quite safe. Also, if you write that this um, delicate stuff, I have never had any problem. And I tell you, I was hell worried about my guitar traveling and passing through unknown hands on the way but it was fine guitar makers do that all the time so if you send your guitar safe you can even ship it to them it cost me 30 euros to send it to spain so i think it's really doable and if you cannot really travel or traveling is too big of a bother for you you could consider that we have a second question from heidi just because you're too nice Let's keep it in the video. You have considered doing a video about memorization. I cannot seem to make much progress here and, and frequently I just end up playing the piece over and over again, which I know is not the answer. I am working on quarantine. Good choice. <laughs> and uh, loving it a perfect platform for learning many things thank you so much for your part in bringing into this world you should definitely thank andrew shields because he did an amazing job i just played it but i mean the music is his and it's just beautiful as it is the answer to your second question is yes i will definitely plan some videos on memorization it's a hot topic and not an easy one because there are many types of problems and many types of difficulties and many solutions for all those different problems and situations so definitely i will start to script on this topic and hopefully you will have a switch tutorial in the near future here on the channel done that's it i hope you enjoyed the tutorial i hope you find it useful and give it a shot to all these exercises because to me it really 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 helped in the beginning and i think is one of the reasons maybe why my right hand is uh, actually maybe better than my left hand i would say just because i learned some good guidelines right from the beginning so you can always start to take um, good habits uh, at any step of the way that you are. So feel free to give them a shot and let me know what you think and how they are going and what are the results that you're experiencing in the comments down below. Again, thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe in the channel if you are not already for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video.